You may hear your loved one's level of injury mentioned frequently. Level of injury refers to where the spinal cord is functioning and is also known as the neurological level of injury. Doctors determine this by assessing the movement and sensation at or below a certain level on the spinal cord. The level of injury designation is a letter followed by a number that corresponds to the spinal nerves. Refer to this subchapter for information about cervical level of injury from C5 to C8. C stands for cervical, and the numbers 5, 6, 7, or 8 refer to the spinal nerves in that section of the spinal cord. Keep in mind that these are general guidelines for levels of injury, and your own or your loved one's injury may differ due to its individual type and severity. The level of independence achieved also has much to do with the patient's health at the time of injury. This includes body type, existing medical conditions, and other injuries that may have occurred at the time of the accident. While the cervical spinal cord nerves affected by a low cervical injury are located in the neck, they control other parts of the body. Lower cervical sections from C5 to C8 correspond to nerves controlling your arms and your hands. Cervical injuries usually result in full or partial quadriplegia. Depending on the exact area affected, persons with injuries may regain some function below the level of injury. An injury at each of these cervical levels has different effects, so we will talk about each one individually. At the C5 level, spinal nerves are connected to the shoulder or deltoid and to the biceps of the arm. At this level of injury, your loved one can raise his or her arms and bend his or her elbows, but will likely have some or total paralysis of the wrists, hands, trunk, and legs. A person injured at the C5 level will be able to speak, but may have weak breathing ability and need a ventilator. They may have low endurance and may also need help clearing saliva. At the C6 level, spinal nerves affect the ability to control wrist extension. Persons with C6 injuries typically have paralysis in the hands, trunk, and legs, but should be able to bend the wrists back, like the movement used in throttling a motorcycle. They can speak and use their diaphragm, but their breathing will be weakened. Spinal nerves at the C7 level control elbow extension and some finger extension, or the ability to straighten elbows or hold fingers out. Most patients at this level can straighten their arm at the elbow and have normal movement of their shoulder muscles. C8 nerves control some of your hand movements. Most people with a C8 level of injury should be able to grasp and release objects. Persons with C7 and C8 injuries can speak and use their diaphragms to breathe, move their shoulders, arms, wrists, and hands, but will have paralysis of some of the muscles of the hand and the essential muscles of the trunk and legs. The ability to cough and clear secretions will be limited. At the C5 level, your loved one will be able to use a power wheelchair, but will need total assistance getting into and out of the chair. At the C6 level, your loved one can move into and out of bed and the wheelchair with some assistive equipment. And people with a C7 or C8 injury can usually get in and out of their wheelchairs without help. They may also be able to drive an adapted vehicle. Most of these functional improvements won't occur at the trauma care center but rather weeks or months later following therapy. For those who can find sources of support, a wide range of driving equipment and vehicle modifications are available. The injured person's ability to care for themselves is limited at the C5 level. People with C5 injuries are typically unable to control bowel and bladder movements and will need assistance to manage their elimination programs. They will need help getting into and out of bed, but can probably eat with assistive equipment. Persons with a C6 injury may be able to manipulate their equipment, but otherwise will need similar help. People with C7 or C8 injuries can get into and out of their wheelchairs without help and can eat, groom, bathe, and dress independently.
you'll probably hear the phrase level of independence during rehabilitation. It refers to your loved one's future ability to function independently and care for him or herself versus needing support from professional or volunteer caregivers. Patients with low cervical levels of injury will most likely need between six and 10 hours a day of personal care assistance with bathing, dressing, management of their bowel and bladder programs, eating, and grooming. These patients may need between two and six hours of additional assistance each day to help with tasks like grocery shopping, meal preparation, and home cleaning. Home modifications may be necessary for persons with low cervical injury. Their home should have doorways wide enough to accommodate their wheelchair and have ramps in place of stairs. Strongly consider making countertops, sinks, and stoves accessible, as well as making bathrooms as easy to navigate as possible. Ramps, door modifications, special sinks, grab bars, and easy-to-turn doorknobs make it possible for people affected by spinal cord injury to live more independently. Friends, family, church, and community groups may also pitch in to help with home modifications and fundraisers. Many people receive funding assistance or donations from special events, local businesses, groups, and even individuals. Later in the rehabilitation process, you may hear the term functional progression which refers to how much progress your loved one may achieve as time goes by. At the lower cervical levels, it may partly depend on whether or not he or she can go to a rehabilitation facility for additional care and therapy after leaving the trauma care center. No matter what, it's important to develop and follow a consistent care routine to help your loved one's possible progress. After spinal cord injury, your loved one will gradually improve. And one of the best ways to monitor this is that if there's any feeling or any movement below the level of the injury, this is a very positive sign. This is something that you can build upon. Gradually over time, the therapists and the rehabilitation folks will try to help drive greater recovery from that little bit of recovery that you're beginning to see. This recovery can occur for weeks and months and sometimes even years. So it's real important for you to push those gains that you see, but also it's very important to begin to accept any limitations in recovery that may come about so that your loved one can move on with life using assisted devices, using those means by which uh, he or she can return to a normal life. At this time, we'll continue on to the last chapter of the video. Chapter 6 provides practical advice for how to deal with the injury and its consequences to your loved one and your family. Lee Woodruff starts off the chapter. She has some great advice because she and her family have been through and survived a catastrophic injury themselves. It's an important part of the video. <laughs> 